This is the full guide on how to use the premium version of EXM, the ultimate tool for boosting your FPS and decreasing your input delay. If you don't have premium, I'd highly recommend starting out with the free version first. You can check out the guide for that in the description. If it helps you, then premium will help you a lot more as it only has about 15% of the tweaks. All right, so the first thing you need to do, since most of you guys probably already have the free version downloaded, just open the app, log out and log in again. This will make sure that you get premium after the purchase. If you don't have the app downloaded, I'll show you how to do that right now. So first head over to exmtweaks.com, which is in the description, go to download and just press download now and run the installer. After that, just log in with the website. You'll have a short onboarding process. I don't really need to explain anything about that. All right, so that's how to make sure you have premium. Before we actually get started with the tweaks in the utility, there's a few things I would recommend for everyone to do. If you don't do this, you could potentially lose performance. So first install a hardware monitor. It will be linked in the description and run your favorite game. First, we need to make Make sure that your temps are good enough to apply the power related tweaks in the utility. If you apply them and you have overheating issues that could make your performance worse, here's how to make sure that you can actually apply them on your PC. So just start up your game of choice. I'll be using Fortnite as an example. I would recommend playing for like five minutes and then open hardware monitor, find your CPU and zoom in on package. As you can see, my temperature is in the 60 to 70 range, which is because I already have a tweaked PC. And I recently reset my BIOS, which kind of messed up my CPU voltages. So don't take me as an example. If you're on a stock PC and you're in the range of 65 to 70 degrees, then you can apply the power related tweaks. Otherwise, I would not recommend it. Without further ado, let's just get started with the tool. So first I would recommend creating a backup in here. Just go name it like before premium. It will take a little bit to create. And let's just get started with the tweaks. So this utility is built in a way where it's safe to apply literally everything as it builds a custom optimization profile for your system. So all you need to watch out for is warnings. So you don't disable a feature that you use on your PC. As you can see, disabling Windows updates will break Microsoft Store. And additionally, there are tweaks which may increase your temperature and power consumption. They will have a warning like that. Again, the only two different tweaks in the core category, Windows 32 priority separation, which just comment below your CPU and GPU and I'll tell you whichever one of these options is best for you. If you also hover over the info icon, you will see a little description, but generally 26 hex is a good stable balance. So for T-Sync policy, I would recommend setting this to legacy unless you're on a low end PC. Otherwise I would set it to enhanced because this will make your latency better, but may make your FPS slightly worse. And this will make your FPS slightly better. So on the low end PC, that might help. Default is just default. Then we have some power related optimizations and timer resolution. You can just apply that. After that, we have the privacy category. I don't want to waste your guys' time too much. As I said before, you can basically apply almost everything if you just read the warnings, but this is just mainly for disabling tracking and data collection systems made by Windows. QOL, this is quality of life. You can just read these, check the descriptions. These won't necessarily boost your performance, but they'll make certain things better. Like for example, you can see like hidden files in File Explorer or you can bring back the classic alt tab menu. Another category is optimized apps, which this is pretty self-explanatory. It just removes bloatware and tracking from applications. You can apply it on the ones you use. And lastly, we have power plan. If you're on a PC, which may have slightly higher temperatures or is like a lower end laptop, I would use the EXM laptop power plan and desktop power plan. It's for PCs who have better cooling. Afterwards, we have hardware. So depending on the GPU, you will have slightly different things here. If you're on Nvidia, you will see this. If you're on AMD, you will just see a bunch of buttons, which is pretty self-explanatory. So in NVIDIA, the first thing I would recommend doing is installing a new GPU driver. Keep in mind, this may make your FPS a bit worse for about 60 minutes of gameplay when shader cache rebuilds. So keep that in mind. So you will just open this menu. I would recommend using version 581.15 or anything newer than that for the utility. In here, if you use the NVIDIA app, then of course you want to select it because you may need it. I actually use it for clipping, so I'll select it. Or if you use anything else from there, make sure to click it. Okay, so in here, I would just recommend copying my settings like this. Some of these are already done by the utility, but it doesn't hurt to select them here as well. Then just press install, agree and continue. Custom, perform a clean installation. After that, just press next, it will install the driver. Your screen might flash black a couple times, so don't worry about that. Then just restart your PC after, and you can get started with the tweaks. So after that, we have NVIDIA profile inspectors, which these just optimize your NVIDIA control panel and many more hidden settings. This is pretty similar to power plans in the way that you should apply the desktop profile if you don't have overheating issues. And 
if you're on a lower end laptop or you have overheating issues, use the laptop one. Once again, watch out for tweaks that may increase your temperatures if you have overheating issues. I know I'm very persistent about this point, but 99% of the times that people say that our tweaks like made their performance worse, they were on like 80 degrees before applying the tweaks and the tweaks just made them thermal throttle. After they reverted all of the power tweaks, they actually got a nice FPS boost from us. So that's why I'm getting this point across. Afterwards, we have CPU, which this is pretty self-explanatory. Just turn on a bunch of switches. Memory, which optimizes your RAM. These don't have any warnings. You can apply all of these, no issue. Then we have keyboard and mouse. In here, we have a one unique thing, which is the custom USB overclocking driver. So in here, try to find your keyboard and mouse. For me, they, they are these two. And just select the rate to your preferred rate. Then simply press install service and this will ensure that your keyboard and mouse actually is locked at this specific refresh rate and there's no variations. Because sometimes if you set your mouse in your software at 1000 Hertz, it may actually be running at like 750 to 800 sometimes, and this will just make it more stable. But it has a very slight chance of breaking your mouse or keyboard. If that happens, just unplug it, plug it into a different USB port and plug it back in the original one. That will reset the driver and fix any issues. Additionally, this can also be used for PlayStation controllers, not for Xbox as Xbox locks those settings, but PlayStation, it works. And we have some general USB power related optimizations. Then in here, you can optimize your USB ports for controller or keyboard and mouse. Lastly, we have the storage category, which I know I say this a lot, but this is pretty self-explanatory. Only semi-unique thing in here is just optimized drives, which will just run defragmentation on your hard drives and trim on your SSDs. And yeah, after that, we have network tweaks. I don't really have much to say about this category just apply them make sure to read the warnings because for example disabling ipv6 may break xbox app microsoft store and some vpns also some of the tweaks may not show up for you if you're on wi-fi just because it can actually cause more damage so it will look slightly different if you're on ethernet or wi-fi then we have adapter tuner which this optimizes your nic settings in one click depending on what specific adapter brand and adapter you have not really much here to say afterwards we have buffer bloat modes which first i would recommend running the buffer bloat test so as you can see these are my network results so first you want to run the buffer bloat test which will determine how good your buffer bloat is and additionally will tell your upload and download speed so ultra low buffer bloat will actually decrease your speed quite a bit but in turn it will make your latency much better as you can see i have pretty good buffer bloat so i don't really need to use it but if you're getting good download speeds and you have like a great c then i would recommend using it or another thing i would recommend is just turn it on when you're gaming and then if you're downloading something go back to normal mode but this will just make your network latency more stable under load which will of course be beneficial for games all right lastly we have network priority which in here you should be able to find your games and you can just turn on the priority in here if you're missing a game you can add it in here by just adding the name and the service exe name which you can get by turning on the game and task manager and finding the service name in the details category all right so afterwards we have the debloat category firstly we have system cleaner which is pretty simple you can just select all and run it it will delete all useless temporary files after that we have services which i would just recommend reading the description for these again if these disable or break something then you can go to fixes which i don't think i've talked about but you can basically fix all like common system functions applications etc like for example fix snipping tool if it's broken this is a more aggressive debloat it will disable a few more services and break a couple more functionalities and the basic one is pretty simple it doesn't really break any super important system features next up we have auto runs where you can just disable startup services in here i would basically recommend disabling everything except maybe like timer resolution but other than that you can disable it and lastly we have uninstall which in here again if if you don't use something uninstall it and yeah okay so then we have exm game mode which all you need to do is just turn on a game that is detected by the way if there's a game that you like to play and it doesn't get detected right now then just let us know in our discord server we'll add it in the next update we added like 20 new games in this one but first just go to configure and set it up these kind of increase temperatures so be aware and yeah after that just press activate and close exm then after you finish playing just open exm again and just simply deactivate it by the way this will get a pretty big rework which will make it more user friendly it will get like a separate mini app it will come pretty soon all right lastly we have the advanced category so in here firstly we have devices this is pretty simple it just disables useless devices that your system doesn't need basically just read the warnings for example if you use virtual machines that i wouldn't turn this one off 
but otherwise it's pretty safe. Then we have MSI mode, which just optimizes the communication between certain hardware components and your CPU, which will reduce interrupt latency. You can enable it for all. And lastly, we have security, which keep in mind, disabling security features may make your security worse. I mean, no sh so I would only do that if you primarily use your PC for gaming, you don't really do anything that could put you at risk or you don't store any super important information on your PC. But once again, all of these are pretty safe. Uh, they don't inherently disable your security. They just remove certain components, which may decrease your performance, but not do that much. And yeah, that's basically everything. Afterwards, just restart your PC and do the temperature test from the start again. If your temperature exceeds 80, then I would recommend just going in each category and reverting all optimizations that have this warning may increase temperatures or power consumptions. I know it might be kind of annoying looking for them, but don't worry. But in one of the updates that we're working on, it will make all power related warnings look like this. So they'll be much easier to find. So yeah, that's everything for today's video. Thanks for buying premium. And also please make a review when you're done with it in the main discord. You can get the premium role by uh, using this channel and entering in your email and also making a review on our website that will help as well. If you need any help joining XM support, you can open tickets here and we will answer all your questions or you can just ask in community support and peace.